It's Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank, and it's AM 1160 WCCS 101.1 FM. He is Bob Pollock from the Extension Service, and you can always call Bob over there at 465-3880, or you can call him right here, right now, 479-1160, or 349 WCCS, that's 349-9227. Ask him your questions about lawns, gardens, and such. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Lovely. Todd Marino over there. Yeah, that's me. Um, uh, this is the literal calm before the storm. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, again. So, again. So people are getting ready for that. Let's take a caller. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask Bob a question. I have tomatoes that are growing to the, uh, to the sky, and I wanted to know, could I cut the tops of them off? Yes, you can do that. You can You can trim out the tops if they're getting above... Uh, the support system, um, or getting to the point where they're going to, if they don't have a support system, just fall over, yes, you can do that. Okay, so that won't affect them then? Well, it'll, it'll affect, it can affect potential yield if, uh-huh. if those, usually if they're an indeterminate variety, meaning they're going to continue to grow and produce flowers on that new growth and then subsequently fruit on there, uh, yes, that will limit the uh, the amount of fruit a little bit by p- topping those off. Uh, but if you yeah, don't, there's a lot of fruit below it. So okay, I, I, you'll probably have enough that it's not an issue. Um, mm-hmm. But there, I guess, there still are potential consequences. Of course, getting at this point in the season too, there would be a question of whether it could flower and fruit and mature um, in time. In time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That was an interesting question. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Trimming, well, yeah. trimming out the tops of tomato plants. The fruit is already formed, and and so you figure, okay, that's what I'm getting out of this. I could trim. Is there a benefit to it? Well, two different types of growth patterns on tomatoes. So we have determinant varieties, mm-hmm. which are going to we want to plant them. They're going to grow. They're going to kind of get to a certain point in growth. Then they'll start to flower. And then they'll fruit. Okay. And they really won't put on much more growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the harvest is more concentrated. So let's say if you wanted to do canning, yeah. um, you might plant a determinant variety. A lot of commercial producers plant determinant varieties because they want to be able to plant that, grow the plant, mm-hmm. get all the fruit on there, and have to harvest it on a limited number of times. Mm-hmm. Um, get that harvest and go. In the home garden, we may want a tomato on a sandwich today and one tomorrow and one the next day. Yeah. So we want that fruit load spread out over a longer period of time. So mm-hmm. if we want to just do that and primarily eat things fresh and we're not as concerned about canning, um, where we want a whole everything to mature pretty much the same time so we can harvest it, take it in, process it. and Then we'll um, get the indeterminate. Yeah, so the indeterminates are going to, They'll continue to grow, okay. and on that new growth, produce flowers and then fruit on there, and they'll okay. keep doing that. So right. you you've got to, this got to have caller. a trellis or a system to, <laughs> to support that, sure, like you would in a greenhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, Good morning. Hi. Uh, I noticed one of our uh, big box stores uh, has a uh, turf builder on sale, and I wondered uh, if... I could apply that uh, now or if I should apply it in the fall. When was the last time that you applied fertilizer? In the spring. Okay. So April, May? Yes. Okay. Sometimes. um, So that's a typical time that we would do that spring application. Some people do it earlier. I myself wait till May to do that, early May. I'll come in and do that because we've already gotten a flush of growth. Um, Our cool season grasses naturally put on their most growth in the spring, Uh, so I'm not trying to encourage any more growth than they're already putting on. So you kind of wait till early, mid-May to put that application on. Now, on this year, at this time, because we've had so much rainfall around here, we very easily can have that nitrogen used by the plant because the plants are continuing to grow um, 
and also because the amount of rainfall some of that nitrogen could have been lost through leaching because of all the water going down through the soil. So now could actually be a good time to put a little bit on. So you probably don't want to do more than half to a pound of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet would be an application rate. Usually with um, that bagged fertilizer like that, all it does is give you a setting on there and usually the amount of nitrogen that you'll apply if you use the setting is one to one and a quarter pounds is what it'll actually put on of nitrogen per thousand square feet if you follow those directions. So if the yard is looking a little yellowing, not as green as it should be, um, that's probably because that nitrogen has been used or leached out, especially if you're bagging the grass every time and removing that. We're also removing new nutrients um, rather than putting those clippings back on and letting them break down and release some of the nutrients that were in those. Um, so you could do an application now, and we've also had enough adequate rainfall to allow that to occur. Some summers it's very dry and hot, and the grass is dormant now, so we would want to avoid doing an application now. If it's on sale, buy it. <laughs> it may not be there or may not be on sale right. later um, in the summer or early fall uh, when you want to put that next application on. Um, so if it's a good deal, go ahead and get it. It's going to save. If you want to use it now or get enough to do now and then put, your, put another application on in September. Okay. Thank you much, Bob. Very good. Thank you. That's another interesting question. So three to usually three to four applications per growing season. Mm -hmm. Some people put on two. So actually it could be two to four. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have a very dense, thick yard, you're really trying to um, maintain it to perfection, you might be leaning towards those four applications a season. Um, if you're trying not, you know, you don't care as much about it, you don't want to have to mow it all the time, um, then you're going to reduce those applications. So a spring and fall application uh, can be fine for the two times a year. Um, add that third one in early spring, May, and then one in the fall. Or you can do the one in May, one in September, and one in mid to late October um, to do that winterizer type. So we have less nitrogen put on then. Then usually there's a little bit of phosphorus and some iron mm -hmm. in those winterizer. I know a guy who, a guy who lives at my house who never puts anything on anything at all. Nothing. Uh -huh. And you still have grass. He uses the mulching mower. There see, you go. And it puts all those nutrients right back down if there are any. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there have to be some, or the, or you would have a desert there. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's growing well. Um, the name of the estate, by the way, is Weed Patch. <laughs> weed Patch. <laughs> and uh, Weed Patch is growing quite well. Uh, 754, if you have a question for Bob, please be sure to get it in now because you want to give him time to answer it before the segment ends. Uh, so um, we've got another heavy rain forecast uh, for the next 12, 18 hours. Um, what do we need to know about well, maybe not lawns, but gardens in particular I'm thinking of, uh, uh, to keep them from getting overwhelmed by moisture. Yeah. Any Surround the garden with sponges? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you do have things that are ready to harvest, it'd be good to go ahead, get those harvested prior mm -hmm. to that. Um, so if it materializes, then we've, we've got that covered, and at least things that were ready to harvest, we've got them out of there before... Yeah. Um, they get pounded again. And this is going to be followed by some really bright sunny weather yeah. <laughs> throughout at least most of next week. Which would be very nice to have. Yeah, and it's not, going to be, it's not going to be hot weather. It's going to be temperatures in the 70s, low 80s. Uh, so some really beautiful stuff is coming up on the heels of whatever this is that we're about to get. So if we can get through this, that'll be yeah. nice to have that for a few days. Yeah. Wanted to mention this because I drove by the other day and I thought, wow, that looks really good. The community garden mm. seems to be really flourishing there at Mac Park. Yes, it is. Yeah. They've really well, done the, a good job. And, and the weather, of course, all, you know, a lot of those plants are in raised beds. Mm -hmm. um, so raised beds on a wet year like this can be an advantage. The water's going to drain <clears> off. Because you have better, yep, 
better water drainage. You've got the plants growing above the ground, um, so you have more room there. Uh, and then you've got a, a different soil mix in there, too, that, uh, that works good for the beds, uh, also will drain well, but still hold moisture. There's compost in there and everything, so there's a good soil in there. If those plants were planted in that native soil that is there in the garden, mm-hmm. <laughs> if, if we had a comparison between the two, um, I think you'd be able to see night and day oh, yeah. uh, between having it in the raised bed and if it was just planted in the um, surface ground there. Seems like the scientist in you would have wanted to do that yeah. and, and got that going so you could compare. Because it can get that, that ground up in that corner can be a little wet mm-hmm. on a good day. Yeah. And, and some how of the soil is a little challenging. How many too. people are involved this year growing the community garden? Do you have an idea? I don't know what the total number is. Yeah. Um, but, the, of course, the beds, you know, a number of the beds are people who have rented those beds. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some of the organizations also have some of the community beds. So there's sharing going on. And of course, they're harvesting some of those uh, that produce, and it's also going to food bank. and yeah. So a lot of good causes and yeah. things going on there that's a really nice thing um and and sort of enjoy the fact that the community garden took hold quickly uh, a lot of people were interested in it probably people that at one time had uh, bigger yards and uh, available spaces to make great big gardens or need for such a thing and then decided i'm getting older i don't really need all that but i do like the gardening aspect of it so i'll just keep my little plot there yep that's right good plan good to good to dance house and we were just uh, had a gentleman in the other day and that he has a big garden, and he's he's getting to the point where he wants to downsize some, and so he was talking about making raised beds and mm-hmm. and uh, narrowing things down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Phone is ringing now. We'll try to get to you off the air as Mr. Pollock's segment is uh, just about over here this morning. It's Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. All right, get your galooshes out and get ready for here we whatever's, go. whatever's coming. Because Round 10, 15, whatever it is. From the looks of things. It won't be a party. Uh, Fox News is up next at the top of the hour. We-